guys, I'm going to try to go more quickly for the next releases because they're only going to be a few small changes on the jackets and on labels. This is a 1967 release of Beethoven Violin Concerto. You still see the DGG, but let's take a look at the label. This is the label and you see it's pretty much similar. Except the only difference on this label is that you start seeing G-E-M-A on some of the releases. One o'clock you have made in Germany in this release. Okay, let's start getting into the 1970s release. This release from Edvard Grieg is from 1973. And if you can see on the label here, let me bring it. see it on the top there they've dropped the other g just as shaft and it's only dutch gramophone on the label now right on top it's only dutch gramophone you have the composer the names of the suites or concertos you have the conductor and you have the orchestra no red stereo anymore for 1970s and 80s release The catalog numbers are now seven numbers. This one is 2530-243. And the reason I'm showing this release is because there's one difference on the jacket. Okay, if you can see on the jacket here, you have a Touch Gramophone logo, you have the composer, and you have the names of the songs, the conductor, the orchestra, but you have no liner notes for this release. Let's look at some releases from the 1980s, and this is going to be a foreign release again. And you start seeing the differences on the jacket. This release has a black cover. You have two labels on top. You can see that. The Dutch gramophone label, and you have an RTB label. You have the composer the name of the concerto, the orchestra, and sometimes you have the names of the artists or conductor. And here you have a beautiful picture there. You start seeing the logo on the right hand corner for digital recordings. Again, the catalog number are seven numbers. And let's take a look at the other differences on this release. Back cover is a little bit different. You have a rectangle with the information. You start seeing this digital recording logo. Okay, and then you have the liner notes in three different languages. This particular release is from Yugoslavia. And this is what this release looks like. It's missing the white band. You have a rectangle, you have Sokolch, you have the release 1993, stereo in 33. You're missing the made in Germany. It actually starts from over here. All rights of the manufacturer. And you have this RTB logo, and as well as described as a digital recording. Okay, here we have another release. This release is from 1971. It is a reissue, but it was originally released in 1968. And the reason I'm showing you this one is because this is actually a gatefold. So you start seeing some gatefolds. some information okay and then you have the release here this is what the jacket looks like so remember in 1970s the catalog numbers started changing to seven numbers this release this release has six numbers one three nine three six two 
So this must have been released at an earlier time. What's interesting about this release is that it has a picture, which I hardly see that on 1970 and 80s releases. Let's start looking at different releases from the 70s and 80s. This is a release from Schumann. And if you can tell from the jacket, it's very different from other releases. This one is missing the yellow logo on top. However, you see it on the side, and then you see this privilege. Privilege is a series from Deutsche Grammophon. So it's not a different label, but it's actually a series from the DG label. I only have a few of them, so I'm not sure if they keep to the same format, but they always have the Ditch Gramophone together with the Privilege logo on there. Format for the back is a little bit different. This is another release. You can tell it's also missing the yellow band logo on top. This is one of my favorite releases from DG. And this is box organ music by Carl Richter. It's a beautiful picture on the front. Um, I'm showing this one because this is also a different series on the Dutch gramophone, and this is a special series. From what I've read of the DG label, Special was considered a low budget. However, I really think this sounds spectacular. This is what the back looks like. More simple, there's less writing. The difference in this release is that the liner notes are only in English. You don't get the three languages on these special releases. Another one of my favorite releases here, I'm showing this one because actually the spine is different and the cover is different. So on this one, you have the Dutch gramophone label, you have the stereo 33 and the catalog number, the composer, the name of the symphony, you have the composer and the orchestra, and then you have the stereo logo. You have a beautiful picture, but you get this gray chrome on the picture as well as on the spine. Not sure if you can tell, the spine is all silver and gray. Silver and gray. Liner notes in three different languages. You have the logo of the orchestra and you have the information on the composer on top. Thank you once again, guys, for stopping by here. And just to have a little recap, we talked about different labels and the importance of the digit numbers and the catalog numbers on the records can help us find around the date or time that the release um, was released. Uh, DG had six digit number catalog numbers from around 1958 to about 1970 and 1970 you start seeing the seven digit catalog releases which you see on this graph here the other interesting thing we saw on the labels was the inscription g-e-m-a which is a German word that is pretty long it is Gesellschaft für Musikalik Aufführung. Loosely, the translation is Musical Recording and Mechanical Duplication Rights Society. It is a performing rights society, and it was GEMA that merged with the smaller society in 1915, and they officially became the GEMA. We also see another inscription, which is B-I-E-M, which is the Bureau of International the Societies der Red Lettrots der Instant at Reproduction Mechanique. And what the B-I-E-M is, 
It is the international organization representing mechanical rights society. So the mechanical rights societies that exist in most countries around the world, they license the reproduction of songs. Um, the members of this rights societies are composers, record companies, and other users of recorded music like authors and publishers. They um, basically they are in charge of working towards paying the royalties uh, for the correct people. So basically, they are working towards getting people paid. Um, I hope that clears up a few things on the labels. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will be doing another episode on Dutch Gramophone to see a little bit more differences and also look at some CDs. Thank you for watching. I hope you and your family are in good health. God bless you, and I'll see you on the next one.